for millennia, the word intelligence, really used the same way, meant how good are you at knowing the world, at understanding deeply the truth that's out there. More recently, our idea of intelligence has become associated with things like uh, problem solving, like technology, like commerce. Less and less has it had that expansive, overall philosophical notion of knowing correctly. I think part of our mission, part of our undertaking, is to, to broaden the question again. Hi, I'm Pranab Das. I'm a professor of physics at Elon University, and I'm the principal advisor for the Templeton World Charity Foundation's Diverse Intelligences Initiative. It seems to make sense that to understand the world, to know the truth of the world, requires more than simply solving IQ tests. There are amazing, crazy forms of intelligence in nature. What's interesting about animals is we have yet to meet an animal that does as many things as well as we do. But we frequently meet animals that do one thing better than what we do. Bees, for example. As a group, they can solve a problem that our computers are still boggled by. Some people call this the traveling salesman problem. So if you're a traveling salesman and you need to make a route that goes the shortest possible way between many different stops, uh, it turns out the calculation of this rapidly exceeds the computing power of almost any supercomputer. But man, you get a swarm of bees together and they can solve that problem quickly, easily for them. That's just something they know how to do. So if we could figure out how they do it, maybe that tells us something about the ways in which we might deploy artificial intelligences. Should we be building swarms of little thinkers? You know, maybe a lot of little thinkers can solve a problem that one big thinker can't. Another animal, the bonobo, is the only great ape that does not kill. They've developed a kind of intelligence, sort of social problem solving, a, a process for overcoming conflict. That means they have no murder, they have no war. Now that, that surely is a kind of intelligence that we could aspire to. One of the questions that we're really interested in is, what are we surprised by? In what ways are animals and humans similar that we might not have expected? There is this reticence to associate two animals characteristics that are uniquely human. And that can be a two-edged sword. It both cautions us against this creation of, or imagining of things that aren't there, but it also can prevent us from being open-minded to the possibility that animals do have human-like experiences. At the end of the day, we care very deeply about uh, becoming better, about improving. So to the extent that we can find other ways of knowing, that offers uh, enrichment. It offers a chance to find our way through the world in a new and broader, richer way. I can't think of anything more important than that.